Yeah, I had this feeling as I was getting ready to watch the verdict in the Derek Chauvin trial be read today that here we go again type of feeling of thinking, you know, with this country and as much as so many people in this country seem to obsess over the police, uh, that there's a very good chance that he might get off entirely talking about Derek Chauvin. Or if he might have been convicted, it would just be on the manslaughter charge. And no matter how overwhelming the evidence was, and no matter how much any variety of factors, there was certainly that lingering concern for me looking at it. Because I know how this country works, and we've seen it time after time after time after time. So what would make this so different and so out of pocket compared to all the other ones? And then maybe I was trying to be a little optimistic about it, saying, hey, you know what? Maybe they won't get him on the second degree murder charge, but maybe on the third degree murder charge and the manslaughter. So there'll be some type of accountability, some type of answering for the crimes here. And as you can imagine, I was legit surprised when the verdict came back and it was guilty on all three charges. I was, I was stunned. Like sure, there's that sense of relief of it actually happened. He actually was convicted, but I was stunned that it was for all three charges. And obviously, anything like this is gonna evoke a lot of emotion out of folks. And there's gonna be a lot of passions flying around, a lot of stupidity flying around as well. But, you know, the one thing I really wanna talk about here and address is the this whole notion of that this verdict today, these three convictions for the three charges, the second degree, the third degree murder charges, and the manslaughter, that that means that justice was served and that justice was given to George Floyd and his family. What in the hell are you talking about? The hell is anybody talking about with this? How is this justice? Last time I checked, George Floyd, still very dead. Derek Chauvin, still very alive. Derek Chauvin killed, murdered George Floyd. Derek Chauvin lives. That's not justice. Derek Chauvin was convicted by a jury of his peers for the crimes he perpetrated against the now deceased George Floyd. Derek Chauvin got his day in court that George Floyd was not afforded. In order for justice to have been served in this particular case, George Floyd either A, would have been left the hell alone, or B, at the very least, would have had a chance in a fair court to have verdict rendered by a jury of his peers. Of course, that's the fundamental problem, whether or not the court is fair to begin with, and the fact that he was basically tried, convicted, and executed on that freaking road as Derek Chauvin dug his freaking knee into the back of the dude's neck for eight whatever the hell minutes it was. How in the hell is this justice? Hell is wrong with people. I understand the relief. Yeah, it's a relief that this actually happened, that somebody actually got convicted for the crimes that they did. But this is not justice. If there was justice, George Floyd would still be alive. If there was justice, George Floyd's family wouldn't be longing for a son, a father, you know, whatever. Brother, they wouldn't, they wouldn't be grieving for him. And if you really think about it, you could point to kind of the, the public, you know, sentiment that has led to this moment over the past almost year. Like what would have happened if that young 17 year old lady didn't catch this all on camera? which begs the bigger question of how valuable was it for somebody to be recording it when maybe the citizens could have jumped in and stopped George Floyd from being murdered. But think about that. What would have actually happened here if we didn't have the video that basically showed the whole fucking thing happening? It would have been BAU, business as usual. The cop would have been put on trial and he would have fucking been acquitted. We all know it, period. So before everybody sits there and talks about 
how this is a great day for the justice system and justice has been served. If we didn't have that video, if we didn't have those months of protests, we didn't have the high profile of this, it's very likely that no convictions would have happened. That's not justice. George Floyd is still dead. That's not justice. You could say there's accountability, and yes, if you want to say at least this is a step in the right direction for accountability, fair enough. But if anything, the fact that a case like this where there was such overwhelming evidence that people like myself and millions of others even had to have that moment of doubt of whether or not he was actually going to be convicted when it was so clearly obvious where the evidence pointed to, that we even even had this sense of relief come over us when these verdicts were read and the convictions were handed down. Like that is emblematic of the bigger problem that we're dealing with here. We should not be celebrating the one-off where we actually got some fucking accountability in the system. And it certainly, certainly, I want to repeat once again, is not justice. And then you've got these people that are going to capitalize upon this to try and make themselves look good, such as, oh, Speaker Nancy Pelosi, who sits there and brings her cunt vibes into the mix by talking about how George Floyd sacrificed his life in the name of justice and whatever the hell she said. You guys have probably seen it by now. You stupid bitch. I'm pretty sure if given the option, George Floyd did not opt to be a martyr for this cause. Pretty sure if given the option, George Floyd would have chosen his life. You stupid, out-of-touch, plastic-looking cunt that needs to get the fuck out of public office once and for all forever! In no way, shape, or form, in no way, shape, or form should we be celebrating George Floyd as a martyr for justice. He didn't willingly make this choice. He was murdered by Derek Chauvin and his accomplices in the crimes who stood by and did nothing to stop it pretty hard to willingly give it up when you have it taken away from you. Seriously. He is not a martyr for this. There is nothing good from this. At the end of the day, a man is dead. There ain't no coming back from that. R.I.P. dead. Gone. And I see people tweeting and talking about well, thank God he always delivers. He didn't deliver George Floyd's security and safety in this case, did he? Why do people insist so much on continuing this abusive cycle? You talk about God always knows the way. If he knew the way, then why is George Floyd dead? Maybe you need whatever you need to make yourself feel better about things, but damn all. Like, at some point in time, can we introduce a little logic into the conversation? The ultimate abuse of a relationship. No accountability for anything that he allowed to happen on his fucking watch, but all the praise when something marginally good comes out of it. And even then, saying this is marginally good is a huge stretch because I want to repeat once again that Derek Chauvin still walks the earth as a living, breathing human being and George Floyd was murdered. He is dead, buried, R.I.P. Rest in peace. And to those people that want to sit there and let their racism and ignorance show, talking about, well, oh, you're going to have a lot of cops that want to quit after this. You know what? If cops, police officers, potential police officers that decide they don't want to join the force are deciding to quit or not join the force because of the accountability to some degree that was provided with this verdict today, then good. We don't fucking need them. They are further proof of it's not just a few bad apples and that whole dumbass argument, and it speaks to the larger endemic systemic problems that we have. If being held accountable and being held to a standard that, hey, you've got a badge, cuffs, a gun, and a taser, unless you're another cop and you mix up the two somehow, some way, that freaking happens. 
If having a sense of accountability of saying it's not okay to just randomly kill people because you can't control yourself and you can't handle yourself well in those type of high pressure situations that are in part a creation of your own doing, then we don't want you as freaking police officers anyways. Who the hell would? We want people that are going to protect and serve and uphold the law, not be above the law, ensure fair and equal treatment of the law for all of our citizens. Not just the ones that you pick and choose that you want to give that treatment to. So screw you if you complain about this means a lot of cops are going to quit. You know what, even if it's your friends or family, I'll tell you straight to your face if we were in person. Good, we don't want them as fucking cops because that means they're probably bastards anyways. If you're that worried about the fact that they might hold me accountable if I kill somebody, then maybe that's somebody that's not mentally suited to be a police officer to begin with. For idiots like Nancy Pelosi that are going to sit there and call George Floyd a martyr for justice and how he sacrificed his life, he did not sacrifice it, he was murdered! For those saying justice wasn't served and this is overdone and Derek Chauvin is innocent, what the fuck are you even talking about? The case that the state was able to provide you was overwhelming. And even in this case, are we getting so bad to the point that we even try to fucking pretend like we don't see the video evidence that clearly shows what happens here? And are those saying that George Floyd has gotten justice? He'll never get justice. Never. Maybe you got a sense of some relief and a little accountability today. And maybe for some of you it doesn't matter much because you're like, oh, that's the last thing we need is another white guy weighing on it. Which, sure, fair enough. You're probably absolutely right. Like I call it when I see it here. Like, there's no justice here. George Floyd is still dead. Derek Chauvin will certainly serve out many years. For those of you that are talking about, oh, the, the Pew and Maxine Waters. Like, yeah, Maxine Waters, another dumb idiot, should shut the hell up. But, you know, if you had a mistrial and went to another trial, he would just be convicted again. And even then, like, let's, let's get away from the far-right, crazy, kooky conspiracy crap for a second, okay? Like, it's not helping paint you in a good light. A murderer was found guilty of forms and versions of murder today. That's the baseline here. Like, this is supposed to be reason for celebration. I promise you. It's not. And if anything, it's just another important example of just how far we truly, truly, truly still have to go to ensure fairness and equality across the board for all of our peoples, not just the ones that frickin' look like my mayonnaise ass.